Oh, good afternoon, scholars of room 502. Sorry, I got such a late start on the benchmark lessons. I had a busy day yesterday filled with meetings and whatnot. Um, let me get my markers here. Mr. Crow and Mr. Bobcat. Keep me, keep me uh, focused and, and in the picture. Zoom in a little bit. There we go. All right, so today uh, we've got a really great lesson um, for Benchmark, and we're going to get started right away. It's uh, my breaking in, and we're going to identify key details and summarize, and this is part one, and uh, hopefully you'll remember how to do this. Um, let me just get my computer ready. I'm sorry. Come on. And now I'm ready. Alrighty, so today you will be able to read to identify key details, summarize a, sto a story, and explain why certain details are central to a piece of writing. So read to identify key details, summarize a story, and explain why certain details are central to a piece of writing. So let's open up our text for close reading to page 22 to the story, My Breaking In. And remember, skillful readers preview and make predictions about a text before reading it. So let's take this opportunity to skim the text, kind of look through it, maybe read a few sentences, look at the pictures, see what's going on there. That's kind of a long story, a long excerpt. Let's see more pictures, pretty pictures. I know a lot of you love horses. I'm not much of a horse person. I've ridden a horse a few times in my life. Um, so go ahead and skim and scan that and notice what the story's about. What, 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 what you think it might be about. What do you think's going to happen um, on this excerpt from Black Beauty? So now you're going to take this time, if you were in class, you would take this time to talk to a partner about what you noticed about the text genre organization, and features. And we could focus your thinking when we do this by asking each other's questions about the uh, text. For example, you may ask, after looking at this, and I'll have to get some classmates in here to help me out, it's Mathemat and Princess Yvonne. So we're going to ask, what do you think the title means? Hmm, Mathemat, what do you think the title means? Well, my breaking in. I'm not sure what a breaking in is. You know, sometimes you have a baseball mitt that you have to break in and get ready. So maybe uh, the, 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 the title character in this story, the horse, maybe he's going to get ready for something. Well, that's a very good, good idea there, Math Mutt. Let's look at the next question. Uh, well, what do you notice about the point of view? Well, well... When I first skimmed it, I saw the word I. Is. And the word I signals that it's a first person point of view. I skimmed a little bit more than Princess Yvonne. Did not. Yes, I did. And I noticed that it's from the first point of view of the horse. Okay, maybe you did skim more than me. And what can we learn from the illustrations? Well, I learned, looking at it, that this is indeed a story about a horse, and I saw all sorts of horse gear, like saddles and bits and bridles, so I think maybe that has something to do with breaking in. Yes, I think so. I don't know much about horses, but maybe that's, that's what this is all about. Okay, well, thank you very much. That was a really good conversation about skimming and scanning. Thank you, Princess Yvonne and Math Mutt. So, today, we're going to read paragraphs one through three, to find out what happens when Black Beauty is four years old. And we're going to take, um, we're going to annotate, we're going to take margin notes as we identify key events and summarize the story, okay? So let's get started on this. I'm going to put a little light on the subject here. And get my glasses on so I can read the right way. And let's go ahead and read the intro. Remember the introduction always gives us a little, um, uh, helps us know what the story's about, because we just have an excerpt, a part. Remember, excerpt is just a part. So let's go ahead and read this together. Black Beauty is a story about the life of a horse told by the horse himself. So it's from the first person point of view, like Math Mutt said. The book was written by Anna Sewell and published in 1877, more than 100 years ago. 
Sewell was the first person, uh, Sewell uses the first person point of view to give readers a first-hand account of a horse's life in England in the late 1800s. As black beauty is passed from one owner to another, he describes how some people treat him with kindness while others are very cruel. The author believes strongly in the humane treatment of animals and she wanted to communicate that idea to her readers. In this passage from chapter three, Black Beauty explains to the reader how he was first broken in. And we notice that's in quotes, so we're gonna find out what that means. All right, we're reading paragraphs one through three, and you can read along with me. I'm gonna get out my highlighter, yellow. Maybe you'll have your yellow highlighter in your um, Avid uh, binder, so you can go and get that out. You can hit pause and come on back. So, I was now beginning to grow handsome. My coat had grown fine and soft and was bright black. Hmm, and it's an excerpt from Black Beauty. So I'm gonna go ahead and highlight, my coat had grown fine and soft and was bright black. Because that has a big part to do with the title of the, of the, the book, Black Beauty. I had one white foot and a pretty white star on my forehead. I was thought very handsome. The master would not sell me till I was four years old. He said, lads ought not to work like men and colts ought not to work like horses till they were quite grown up. So here's something's gonna happen when he's four years old. That's what we're looking for. It looks like my master, we're gonna highlight, would not sell me till I was four years old. Okay, so here we have, I'm not gonna take notes yet, in the, on the sides, we're just looking at some, some key events and details here, okay? So that's really important. Okay, let's read paragraph two. When I was four years old, Square, Squire, that's like a mister, a country gentleman, Squire Gordon, we don't really use that in the United States much, usually it's used in England. So when I was four years old, Squire Gordon came to look at me. Well, when I was four years old, he examined my eyes, my mouth, and my legs. He felt them all down. And then I had to walk and trot and gallop before him. He seemed to like me and said, when he has been well broken in, he will do very well. My master said he would break me in himself, as he should not like me to be frightened or hurt. He lost no time about it uh, for the next day he began. So we have a couple of key events here. Well, obviously Squire Gordon is gonna, gonna buy Black Beauty. And so we're gonna highlight um, he seemed to like me and said, when he has been well broken in, he will do very well. So that tells us that Squire Gordon is more than likely going to buy this horse. And the other part of this, instead of Squire Gordon breaking in Black Beauty, the master is going to take him on himself. My master said that he would break me in himself. So we're going to highlight that. My master said he would break me in himself, as he should not like me to be frightened or hurt. Well, we can infer that the master thinks uh, Black Beauty will be scared if he's broken in by somebody else. Let's go to paragraph three. Everyone may know what breaking, uh, everyone may not know what breaking in is. Therefore, I shall describe it. It means to teach a horse to wear a saddle and bridle and to carry on his back a man, woman, or child to go just the way they wish and to go quietly. Besides this, this, he has to learn how to wear a collar, a crupper, and a breeching, and to stand still while they are put on. Then to have a cart or a chase fixed behind so that he cannot walk or trot without dragging it after him. And he must go fast or slow just as his driver wishes. So this whole paragraph is about being broken in. So I'm going to highlight Everyone may not know what breaking in is, therefore I will describe it. And then he get, uh, Black Beauty gives all the details about what breaking in is. And I came across some words that I'm a little unfamiliar with. So we're going to circle those words. Let's circle, um, you know, let's circle bridle, just so we get a good definition of that. I think I know, kind of know what that is. But I don't know what a crupper is. Maybe one of you folks that rides horses, there's a lot of horse riders out here in Anza, um, and a breaching. I'm not sure what a breaching is either. And to stand still while they're, and then, oh, then have a cart or a chase. I think I have a good idea what a chase is, but uh, I'm going to look that up too. All right, so those words right there, bridle, crupper, breaching, 
and chase. Okay? So those are some words I'm going to look up later. But now let's go ahead and take some notes on the side here. And we're going to take a note. Um, I'm going to go right over here, excuse me, Mr. Crow, or Raven, and put um, black coat. He has a black coat of hair. So that shows that the title is, right, he's called Black Beauty. Um, and he would not be sold at four years old. I'm just going to put it here to help me remember this four years old, because that's a pretty important event in a horse's life, apparently, on this place where he's being, where Black Beauty's being raised. And then it looks like um, here, Black Beauty will be sold. We get that information. And then finally, I'm going to put here so I can refer back to this, um, what and I'm going to put this in quotes, breaking in means. Because remember, the title of this ex excerpt is my breaking in. So we have all of that information ready to go for us. And that means we're probably ready to write a um, summary. So um, let's go ahead and do that. And we're, it's just going to be a really quick summary. And I'm going to use it right down here, and I'm going to write nice and big so you can see, and you can write along too. Squire, S-Q-U-I-R-E, Gordon, G-O-R-D-O-N, Squire Gordon, decides to buy Black Beauty. You can kind of infer that. when he is four years old. Comma. But the master must do what? Break him in first. So that's kind of a summary of those three paragraphs right there. And you know what I'm going to do for fun? Remember, um, remember we had, well, most of us were able to keep the different colored highlighters. We had pink, blue, and yellow, I believe. I'm just going to go ahead and use my pink highlighter to show what the breaking in process is all about. Okay, it means to teach a horse to wear a saddle and bridle. I'm going to highlight that. Carry on his back a man, woman, or child. Um, learn to wear a collar, a crupper, and a breeching. And to stand still while they're put on. Then have a cart or chase fixed behind so that he cannot walk or... Uh, trot without dragging it after him. And he must go fast or slow just as his driver wishes. So that's a lot to learn in the breaking in process. Okay, now it's your turn to go ahead and read paragraphs four through six of my breaking in to find out how black beauty is broken in. So what I'd like you to do is read paragraphs four through six on the next page and Think about, underline, or highlight what you think are the key events. So go ahead and pause and read this, and then come on back when you're ready to see what Mr. Leggett thinks the key events are, okay? Okay, welcome back. So in this um, um, first paragraph, let's go ahead and read it again. He must never start at what he sees nor speak to other horses, nor bite, nor kick, nor have any will of his own, but always do his master's will, even though he may be very tired or hungry. But the worst of all is when his harness is once on, he may neither jump for joy nor lie down for weariness. So you see, this breaking thing is a great thing. This breaking in is a great thing. I'm going to put that as a key event because it shows he's being sarcastic. He's not, he doesn't think it's a great thing. He's being like, oh, you got to be kidding me. This is a terrible thing. So what do you think Black Beauty means when he says, so you see, this breaking in is a great thing? 
Well, obviously, like I said, he's being sarcastic. He doesn't think it is a great thing. So I'm going to put sarcastic over here. All right. Let's go ahead and continue on. I had, of course, uh, long been used to halter and headstall and to be uh, and to let about in the fields and wings quietly, but now I was to have a bit and a bridle. My master gave me some oats as usual, and after a good deal of coaxing, remember that's one of our vocabulary words, he got the bit into my mouth. Then he got the bridle fixed, but it was a nasty thing. There was the, the, those who have never had a bit in their mouths cannot think how bad it feels. It is a great piece of cold, hard steel, as thick as a man's finger, to be pushed into one's mouth between one's teeth and over one's tongue with the ends coming out at the corners of your mouth, at the corner of your mouth. So what we're looking at here is what's the first thing that happens to Black Beauty? Well, when he's being broken in, he gets a bit, right? I was to have a bit in bridle. And how does he feel about this, and what details would support your answer? Well, I think you could tell already that he does not like this at all. He says, um, it was a nasty thing. There was, ne uh, and then why was it nasty? Um, it is a great piece of cold hard steel as thick as a man's finger to be pushed into one's mouth between one's teeth and over one's tongue with the ends coming out the corners of her mouth. So, that shows that it is not something he enjoys or likes. Let's go to paragraph six. And it is held fast there by straps over your head, under your throat, round your nose, and under your chin, so that no way in the world can you get rid of the nasty hard thing. It is very bad. Yes, very bad it is. At least I thought so. But I know my mother always wore one when she went out, and all, ho all horses did when they were grown up. Oops, just printing something right here and all horses did when they were growing up. So what with the nice oats and what with my master's pats, kind words, and gentle ways, I got to wear my bit and bridle. So let's just, let me just deliver these papers. And I'm back. A lot going on in the house. So, um, what's the next thing the master does to break uh, Black Beauty in? Well, he gets the, the used to the bit and bridle. So, let's um, highlight. Um, da -da 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 -da. Uh, with my master's pats, kind words, and gentle ways, I got to wear my bit and bridle. So he got used to it, it sounds like, okay? And um, that's paragraphs, uh, we we're just looking at, excuse me, just double checking, paragraphs four through six. Something else is going to come next, and I think it's a saddle. That picture tells us the saddle is going to come next. So let's just write a really quick summary about this. So we start out with that he doesn't enjoy breaking, he doesn't think breaking is a good thing. Um, then he gets the bit and bridle put in his mouth, and he doesn't like that. And he gets used to it, though, it looks like. So let's go ahead and write that. Black, in the notes here, black beauty does not think that breaking in is... Mm, Let's put nice. Then he hates the, the bit. But gets used to it. And we could tell that he probably gets used to it because the master's being very nice about him, you know, petting him and all that. Alright? So what I'd like you to do, if you have the time and effort and energy, is reread paragraphs three through four, and um, just think about, uh, you know, why the author is choosing to write this from the horse's point of view.
not from a third person narrative, but a first person narrative, okay? Please be sure to uh, do your math, your imagined learning, and imagined reading. And um, I will see you when? This is lessons for Thursday, so I'll see you tomorrow, Friday. Hooray! Friday! Only two days of school left.